uh, a good airbrush um, make really good results. And not um, particularly it's expensive not either. Well, as we're talking about paints, yep. we're, we're going to have a conversation, yep. actually a tutorial on how to get started with an airbrush set. Yes. So I'm going to go through the absolute basics of Correct. connecting all the equipment up, mixing up some paint, and we'll just spray it on a bit of paper just and to see what happens. Yep. We'll show you how it all goes. So, so I mean, th these are sort of uh, obvious things that um, I guess are obvious to us, but exactly. may not be obvious to everyone else. So we're going to start off with, with our compressor. So this is our really ancient compressor that we use on various projects. Absolutely. Rob, Rob, who used to work here, painted hundreds of bodies with this uh, with this compressor. He did. Um, and there's a few other people that borrowed this over the time. So it has uh, seen a bit of action. Yeah, it's been around. Uh, so let me grab the other components here. So just as a quick uh, explanation, so this particular compressor is the tank type. So on the top, you've got the, the actual compressor motor. So it's going to be drawing air inside and then it, um, it blows it into this tank here, which holds onto it. And then when this particular tank is up to pressure, this switches off and then you uh, draw off the air through this um, hose that I'm connecting up to your airbrush. So first thing I'm doing, I'm just screwing on the end of the hose. Let's see. I've got a little holder here. So a holder is really handy so that your airbrush doesn't fall on the side and the, the paint goes everywhere. Okay, so I've got one of our airbrushes there. So this is gravity feed. It's got double action. So double action basically means you pull it back, controls the needle, gives you more paint flow. You press it down and that'll give you um, more or less pressure. That's right. Okay, so we'll leave this here. All right, other thing you need to do is you need to plug it in. Okay, so it's important, no power. Yeah, no pressure. No power, no play. That's it. Okay, so on the bottom of these tank type ones, they've got a, uh, a breather valve, which you normally leave loose. That's so all the, the moisture inside the tank can escape. If you don't do this every time, then it'll all rust up. So make sure that's tightened up. That's tight. And I'll switch it on. A bit nosy. Off it goes. Not too nosy. I think it should be okay. If it's too noisy, let us know because I can move this quite easily. So over here, I've got the, um, this is the water trap. So as this uh, is pumping air, the, the air will get hot from going through the compressor. Right. So when you've got hot air going into a cold tank, it condensates the water and it collects on the bottom. So that's why we leave the bottom of the tank. That's right. And then also, if there is water after using it for a while, as it comes through, it'll get caught up in this water trap here. Now at the top of it, it's got a uh, filter as well for dirt and dust. And then this particular area here is for controlling the pressure. The pressure. And then you may not see, just over here, we've got the uh, the pressure gauge as well. And so we're operating, operating this one at around about 20 feet side. Okay, so that's just going to continue on a little bit until we switch off. It's almost there. All right, I'll just pop it down here. So as you can see, this is actually quite solid. So yes. this is specifically designed for uh, I guess indoor use, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, it's just on the floor and it's it, not really annoying at all. That's right. Yeah, definitely usable indoor. Um, so good option if you're airbrushing your, even in your garage, I suppose, you know, if you spend quite a bit of time airbrushing, yep. with a big traditional garage compressor can get really, really noisy. Yes, that's right. So after a few hours, you probably... I used to use one of those. Struggle. It used to scare me every time it switched on. <laughs> yeah, true. You'd that. go, Whoa! And you'll jump out of your seat and you'll, you'll spill it. all your paint everywhere. So, as you can hear, well, as you can hear anymore, yes. it's, 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 uh, it's full, the tank is full. That's right. So, so the compressor switched off. Switched off. So they'll okay. switch on automatically when the tank yeah. completes. Okay, so I've got a couple of um, containers here, which I'm going to be mixing up some paint. So we've got the Scale 75 Arches Acrylic. So that comes in these tubes. So I've just got a little container here um, for mixing it up. So basically what you have to do is, this is ready for brush painting. Yeah. It comes out very, very thick. Um, so even brush painting, we normally thin it down a little bit with water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit in the container and then we're going to use this particular thinner and we're going to thin it down so we're going to airbrush with it. So basically you need to have it at a thin point so that it sprays. Yes. Uh, if it's too thick, it'll splatter. Uh, if it's too thin, it'll just give you very thin, very thin coverage. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't a bad thing, but uh, if you can get a, a happy medium, then it'll work out a lot better. At this now, point, if, you, if you're spraying and it's not coming out, I would not suggest to increase the pressure. The no. pressure often is not your problem. That's right. And if you do so, you end up drying the paint in the gun. 
Yep. And that will produce the opposite effect. That's right. It will block up the nozzle. It's block up the nozzle. Yep. So what you're going to do, you're going to put more pressure again and yes. block it even more. Yep. So if it doesn't come out, stop, thin the paint further yep. and try again. So, okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of. See if we yeah, we'll do the. Yeah, that's maybe better. That's yep. good. Okay. Okay. So I've got my um, a clean container here. I've got to cap off my my paint. So I'm just going to pop in a little bit of paint, just inside here. So you see that there's just a little squeeze, a little dollop. You see how thick it is. It's really creamy. Okay, and so I'm going to add thinner to it. To a point where it's going to be milky. So this is one of those things of contention. A lot of people say. How do you thin down paint for airbrushing? So unfortunately, it's one of those things that you have to do with uh, a bit of um, practice. So you can get some of those um, really thin paints yeah. like SMS yeah. um, or Vallejo Air. So that'll give you an idea of the sort of thickness, but you really pick the feel after you use it. That's right. So just get this. So this is a scale 75 thinner. So it's got a little drop, uh, dropper type hole in it. So I don't know, it's probably about 10 or so drops in there and I'll just mix it through and once I mix it I'll have a closer look at it one of the really simple tests is after you mix it like this if you hold up your brush and it can create a, a drop actually a stick would probably be better because the brush is trying to keep it in there just by looking at it like this now it's looking pretty close to airbrushable I don't know if I can show you a bit, give you an idea if I drop a bit on the side there. So it's not actually flowing by itself, that little ball. But you can see the bottom there, how, how liquid it is. So when we say milky, you want this to be thicker than water basically, but not like cream. So if you're talking about, you know, dairy products, well, I think milk is the closest thing. Okay, so that's, to me, that's a milky consistency. Now, if it's a little bit thicker, it doesn't matter. It'll still spray. If it'll be thinner, it'll still spray. And then from there, you can fine-tune it. Okay, so I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. So my little trick is just hold this, so the, the paintbrush up against the side. And then as the liquid touches it, it'll guide it into, into the, the, the bucket. So unfortunately, you can't really see it there. But that's all flowed in there. While you're doing that, we've got a question for you guys. Yep. Uh, Tony's asking, is there a general ratio or thereabouts that you recommend for thinner to paint? Uh, not really. So people ask me that in the shop all the time. So my, my general starting point, just so people have got a reference, I'd say try it with 30% yeah. thinner to, to start with. Um, because you've got a lot of different brands of paint, the pigments are different, and the bases different. are different. Yeah. yeah. And then from the 30%, because everything needs to be thinned anyway, yeah. You can try it out from there and then just tune it. Obviously, if you compare the um, scale 75 yes. to um, Tamiya, for say, yes. Tamiya is already quite liquid. That's right. But then this one is really effectively a paste. Really. Yes. This is quite thick. So there will yes, be that's right. a huge difference in uh, uh, amount of thinner that you're going to use with one or the other. Yes, that's specifically. right. So also, you'll find that um, certain colors work better with more thinner than others. So yeah, one, one of those um, particular pigments, no matter what brand, is yellow. So yellow, for some reason, doesn't cover anything, really. Yeah. So you try to have that mixed as thick as you can. That's sprayable. Just sprayable. Yeah. But something like black, that covers almost anything. You can go a bit thinner with that. Okay, so we've got our paint inside um, the container there. We've got our... It's all hooked up. Air pressure is up. And we can start spraying. So basically, again, it's double action. So you pull back on the trigger. That controls paint flow. So the further you pull it back, the more paint that will come out. And then the pressure is operated by pressing down. So you press down a little bit, you get a little bit of air, yeah. you press it down all the way, and then you'll get um, uh, much more uh, air pressure. Okay, so you see, you might be able to see there, so that's a small little dot. So you can see how, how easy that is to airbrush already. So the consistency is not bad. Now if you do something consistent, Like so. And then if I use more pressure. So it's as simple as that. So the closer you are, the finer you're going to get little dots. Like so. And then 
you can spray with more pressure and you probably want to hold it back further so that you be nice and smooth. Okay, and simple as that. So just by looking at this, you can see at this point here, I've sprayed too much paint and it's starting to drip. And something you can see that from the reflection as well. You see how it's reflecting there? So this will come from experience too, that you don't want to get it to this point because otherwise that's, that's, right. that's too much. And that's going to drip and leave you with some dripping marks. marks. Yeah. yeah. And then you find the, the final ones are already dry. So that's a simple, really quick demonstration on airbrushing. airbrushing. How everything all hooked up together, uh, how to mix up. I mean, it's a really simple mix session there, but if you just remember those, um, those hints, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And then after this, we've just got to clean it up. So being a water-based paint, well, all you got to do is um, just get the excess and pour it in and here. Just clean. Yep. Because this stuff here that we're pre-mixed, well, we seal that up when we use it again. And then we spray out the excess. It's all gone. And we just use some water. Got some water in here. Actually, we can just use thinners. So. They use thinners or water. Obviously, the water is going to be cheaper. You just get that out of the tap. Just flush this out. Okay. At the end of this stage, yeah, I'll use something like this. We'll wipe out the uh, the cup. So put that in there. Wipe out the cup. Okay, so you can see that's pretty shiny in there. Spray out any excess. And then, before I finish, I'll just put in a couple more drops. So that's spraying absolutely pure thinner through it. That's it. And that's it. Perfectly clean. Yep. And then you can just hear the compressors just fired up again. That's pretty much it. Very so good. That? I've got a question for you guys with that. <clears throat> yeah. Say if you've got particularly stubborn paint that might move, could you use a paintbrush to, uh, with thinners to clean out inside the injection nozzle there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So paintbrush is always handy for doing that too. So just like the paintbrush I used before for mixing, I'll just go like this. And this will clean out all the, the crevices exactly. on the inside. Yeah. Just wipe it down. There you go. Off you go. Uh, obviously, the, the airbrush can be fully uh, disassembled. Uh, yes. We actually have a video on on, uh, on our channel showing that. Yeah. But you, you, if um, perhaps you spray with too much pressure, the paint dries inside. You may have to give it a clean so you can remove uh, the nozzle, the needle, everything, and just going with the brush. Some yep. thinner and give it a good clean. So yeah, if you well, have the field that is blocked, just do it as soon as you can before yes. it starts drying in. Yes. Because uh, once the specific acrylic paint are dry, it's, they're going to be really hard to clean. Yes. So just give it a good clean with a the brush. There's uh, some nice kits to, with different size brushes that you can just put from the front and yeah. the back. Just yeah. pull everything well, I apart. Could, I could quickly pull this one apart. We could have. Yeah, yeah. I'll just get I'll get the excess air out of the um, compressor. The compressor. Could be a bit noisy for a second. Yeah. Then. And then some space here, just and just make it easier apart. to pull apart. I will also say that the scale seventy five paint is very vibrant for such a paint. So I've never seen it so clear, so clear. Yeah, it's, it's a very very nice pigment. So it's it's incredibly um, concentrated. Okay, so we just pop that there. So let's jump on this other camera again. This way. Okay, so double action. Um, Airbrushes are all very similar in design. I mean, the design of the actual tool goes back um, probably close to 100 years. So they've been used in art for a long, long time. So you've got your whole body here. Just move it there, so it's a bit easier to see. Okay, so you get your back section. I've got a, um, uh, a stop here. Not all airbrushes have this. Basically what that does is controls how far your trigger goes back. Okay, so at the moment, that's at full movement. If I screw that in, you might see the trigger moving forward and that's a, a travel control so basically at the moment i've got to set so that you have hardly any control <coughs> okay so first thing you do is you undo the back section it comes out and it shows you a little um, clasp here so this is a, a screw cl uh, clasp that holds onto the needle so you've got the back of the needle you can just see at the back here and you just undo that just a little turn, just like that. That's like a quarter of a turn. And then the needle comes straight out. Okay, now as you pull them out, you need to pull it out straight out. So yeah, this particular point here, 
is really really sharp so it's really important that that doesn't bend because if it does bend then it'll start blowing the air in a different direction so you won't have nice perfect dots or really straight lines okay so once you've got your um, your needle out the important thing is you just want it clean so as you can see it's pretty clean already what you can do is you can just wipe it off with a rag like so so that's perfect there next thing to do would be um, the nozzle itself so there's a uh, there's an end cap so you undo the end cap put some screws comes off like that and you'll notice that the brass section's here so I wonder if you can actually see that It'll focus up, see. yep okay so the pointy part there is the nozzle so occasionally because it's tapered if you've got dry paint um, getting into here it'll sometimes get stuck on the nozzle and stopping spraying so what you need to do is you get your nozzle removing tool so it would be quite often be a spanner like this so you see a little cutout on it and that uh, matches up with some notches in the uh, nozzle just like that focus yep. so you got to be very gentle with this because because it brass it's got brass um, uh, into brass yeah and the threads are really fine so basically with this you just want to unnip it like this so get to a point where you can undo it with your fingers so at the moment it's still a little bit tight now you've got to be very careful with this because these are actually really small and if if I dropped it at the moment we'll probably lose it so just be careful we'll go like this oh off it comes okay so it's still attached here so if I do this you'll probably see all the components here yeah just how small it is so let's just move that bit of dust out of the way there okay like this here so there's a the nozzle there so important thing is you want that clean so easiest thing to do is you look through it into some light so if I look at through it into some light here and I can see the light coming straight through it so that's fine but just say it was you couldn't see any light or it was a very fine light then you want to clean the inside of that so to clean that you can use um, a sharpened toothpick yeah or you can use um, uh, specialized um, brushes, brushes that go brushes. through. Yep. And so it's very important that you clean it out uh, because if it doesn't clean out, it'll get blocked. Uh, it'll get to a point where you see bubbling coming back up the cup. And that's usually because this section here is being blocked. That's right. Yeah. And then after that's all cleaned up, now to put it back into place, you need to spend quite a bit of time and uh, be careful in screwing this on because you don't want to cross thread it. If the threads go in the wrong angle, then they'll get damaged and they won't be sealed and sorry I'm just concentrating here at the moment all right so you can see there I've just put it on with my my finger force Let's see if I can get this to focus there we go oh, here we go it gets there okay so just got about half a mil left and so we'll get it as close as we can with our fingers Okay, like so and then this is a really important step too so when you tighten it up let me just get this aligned with the flats now you want to feel it so that so you're moving it really gently with hardly any force so I'm just barely pushing it and you'll feel the point where you get the most resistance and at the point of most resistance you probably just nip it up like this and that's it now if we went any further it will tear all the, the threads right. off that's pretty much it to getting it back on now the other thing you may notice is that if you take this off often they've got a seal inside and um, that seal stops the air from the outside from going in to here so what you might notice is if you take off the nozzle and it's clear and you put it back on and it's still not spraying properly it's got air coming back up the cup yeah. it's probably got air leaking through the nozzle and the bodywork so you need to reseal it with specialist um, airbrush sealant or the simplest thing I've found when you're in a rush you want to fix things up if you use a little bit of um, the tiniest bit of Vaseline or even um, uh, lip balm so a bit of um, petroleum jelly just a little touch on a couple of threads and when you screw it all up it'll be airtight and so that's it for the nozzle so you screw it back on being careful not to damage anything so it screws on like so and then the needle goes in so I take a bit of time to guide the needle in with my finger so I put it on like so make sure the very tip doesn't touch anything so until it's straight push it all the way in 
The other important thing is when it's going in, you don't want to push too hard either because otherwise it will flare open the, uh, the nozzle. Okay, so it feels like it's homed in, like so, and then once that is, tighten the back up that clasp, put the back back on it. That's it. That's ready to go. Done. Simple as that. Very good. Yeah. So yeah. this to demonstrate the airbrushing. Yes. It's really powerful and it's not that complicated. No. Um, you need a few basic tools, mm. uh, a bit of patience, but it, it's all possible. So. Mm. To produce uh, body shells like the one the Brad showed before, or, yeah, or even or like this. something like this, yes. Um, or obviously dioramas like the one we present in the competitions. Yes. yes. Uh, a good airbrush um, make really good results. That's right. And, uh, and not um, particularly not, expensive either. You can get really basic ones. Correct. And mm. it's not really difficult. A little bit of mm. maintenance, as we saw, it's not difficult. It looks very complicated, but mm. it's not really. Yes. So I'm uh, um, just. Uh, Give it a go, mm. I suppose. It's, yeah, uh, sure. it's a lot easier than we often think. So Yeah, it can be scary when you think about That's it right. and you see the results coming out. That's right. But when you actually use them, uh, just follow a few really basic tips that are shown. And it should be good. So just a uh, few tutorials online and it uh, shouldn't be too difficult. Yep. And in any case, we're here. So if you're stuck with anything, yeah, that's right. you can do a quick tutorial either yep. live or, or on our YouTube channel. Yeah, for sure. So,